ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the forum little green men and rocket scientist wow do the two go hand in hand i bet there's a lot more there then then you realize and i bet you're going to find out a lot of things tonight that you never even suspected or guessed this evening that we're pleased to welcome our guest speaker mr david adair to the granada forum he, uh, he's conducted his own need to know con conference he is a top rocket scientist he's an international space consultant he's an internationally recognized leader and expert in space technology and he will be speaking to us about how he and other select individuals testified under oath before a u.s joint senate and house hearing in washington dc on april 9th of this year the subject dealt with their first-hand experience with UFOs and extraterrestrial phenomenon intelligence in top-secret Air Force Base known as Area 51. We'll also learn about other space programs. Additionally, Mr. Adair will talk about his, his new book, America's Fall from Space. This recounts the story of the U.S. space program from Warner von Braun's beginnings building the V-2s for Nazi Germany to the horrible Challenger incident. As a rocket scientist child prodigy, he was taken by the government to work on the Navy's newest jet engines, later becoming a space technology consultant who crossed swords with NASA when he learned of the corruption and the technical problems that the Challenger shuttle faced prior to its launching. Also included will be a brief recounting of his recent experience at the Roswell 50th anniversary celebration, where he was an invited guest speaker. This is sure to be a most enlightening presentation, and questions can be asked regarding Little Green Men afterwards. Now please join me with a great big Granada Forum welcome to Mr. David Adair. some questions first. I need to know a few things here. Uh, how many people heard me on Art Bell last night? Golly, about half the room. Wasn't right. It was night for last. At 3 a.m. I lost track. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Y'all's radio programs go run a little different than we do back home. We were all up sidewalks about 10 o'clock at night and that's it. Um, as you can tell, y'all, I'm, fr I'm from Georgia. So we got to get some proper English first. Y'all is singular. All y'all is plural. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you thought this was going to be a dry lecture from a rocket scientist, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong answer. Um, how many people here saw? Well, maybe I should back up for a minute. Do you remember the last time I was supposed to be here? Well, some of you are going, no. Well, anyway, for those who didn't know, I was supposed to be here, at, what was it, last month? Sometimes, boy, see how good I am? Well, what happened was, um, this is the little guy that caused the problem. This is my planner. i got to get a bigger planner. Um, I had wrote your date in here for Friday the next night. So I had Friday off, and I went down Sunset Boulevard. But anyway, I, I wrote my wrong date in the wrong place. I do that about once every 10 years, and I was 12 years overdue, so y'all got it. So normally that's not a problem. I work things out with clients and stuff. But what I wasn't ready for was the reaction, because I guess y'all really take a lot of things seriously here. Um, <laughs> Let me give you an example. When I didn't show up, uh, it's proverbial things uh, when the stuff hit the fan because, boy, it set off a chain reaction. First thing that happens, my wife calls and goes, what have you done? I go, what? She goes, you didn't show up at that meeting. I went, oh, God, that was the first notice. And then um, she said, all these people are calling, and there are three cars out in the driveway, and people are, are, are armed. They're going to go look for you. 
they, they think you've been abducted. Jeff Baker of Baker Brigade, you know, on that radio, he called me up, left several messages. David, I don't know if you're all right or not, but there is about 5,000 phone calls on this radio station. And he said, um, man, there, there's a militia forming out there. It's going to go look for you. And I, all this is happening, and I'm just standing in, the, in my friend's living room going, oh, my God, you know, I'm listening to all this stuff. And um, so, yeah, people got really perturbed. They thought, oh, he's been taken. That's it. He's gone. He doesn't come and got him, you know. So, um, no, I just forgot to write my thing in the right day on my planner. So, anyhow, I appreciate the attention. Uh, <laughs> I could imagine some of my clients in corporate America if I don't show up, fire him. He may be dead, good, but it saved us some trouble. But, um, yeah, y'all kind of went, went a little upset there. So, anyhow, those of you that were here, you saw a film. I <laughs> got to my head one of my films. Um, how many people in here saw that film? Okay, boy, quite a few of you. Um, we have an option on programs. I was going to go through that film we got a problem. About a third of you have seen that, but I don't want to repeat the information again. So what we'll do, we'll kind of jump around on some of the programs, and I'll give you more details on those projects than you've got on the tape. So I might take care of both sides that hadn't seen it and those who've had. Um, let me give you a background on what I do. Um, I work as a TTC. That's a technology transfer consultant. And you might wonder, what is technology transfer? Well, it's, in my particular case, it's where I take a, um, an existing space technology, something that we had built out in orbit to be used out there for a need or a service or something that we had to get done. I come along and I look at that and I go, wow, I wonder how I can re redesign that and apply it into commercial applications. So the company I have is called uh, Intersect. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia. I even know where I got that y'all's accent. But anyway, in my company, what I do is I do a transfer. So the best way to describe that, maybe I should give you an example. See, right here you have uh, John Young. This is what I wanted. This thing right here that we have stuck on John's neck is a sensor and it'll pick up blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory functions. We tape them all over the body. The information is then sent from orbit back down to ground by telemetry and the doctors sitting there can look at the astronaut's blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory functions and all the vital signs. I was looking at that and I was going, wow, you know what we could do with that? So we micro the process down and um, let's say you just... <laughs> had a head-on collision out here or a car wreck, which I think that might be a very common event around here from what I've seen in traffic today. But uh, there's been a, tr a really tremendous impact. So the people are injured, they're dying from the, from the crash. The paramedics come sliding up to the rescue. They throw open this little suitcase. They hook the leads onto the person laying in the street. The information is sent from the paramedic units to a local hospital by radio waves, the doctors look at the scope and they're looking at the blood pressure, the pulse rate, the respiratory functions, all the vital signs. The doctor will tell the paramedics what to do to stabilize that person if you get them to a trauma center, and that's where those suitcases came from. That's technology transfer. So it's, it's where we take stuff and redesign it. Um, I can give you some more maybe practical applications, maybe not so drastic. Let me tell you a story. On the Apollo spacecrafts, those things are not very big. They're about the size of a good broom closet. You got three men in there, okay? So they are eating solid food, okay? <laughs> it's three days out, three days back, two days on the moon. It's about eight days. So after about three days of eating solid food, what's going to happen, y'all? Something's got to give, you know? Okay, well, you got another problem. It's weightless. Things float. You begin to appreciate this problem, right? It will get your attention, I guarantee you. Um, so anyhow, there are no bathrooms on board. They wear diapers. So we had to build a very special diaper that could absorb nasty stuff away, keep them dry while they're still there, and hold things together, okay? Technology transfer called Johnson Johnson. You get a disposable diaper, and that's where it came from. That's technology transfer. 
Now, it goes on and on, and we can go for hours and hours here. About 72,000 transfer already occurred out of the space program into the commercial sector. And it's just influenced and interwined in your life. And you just couldn't believe how much stuff you use every day that you didn't even think about that came from the space program. So that's what, uh, that's what technology transfer is. Now, you might find that that's pretty uh, useful because in the space program, um, on the commercial side where I'm at, I don't work for NASA. If I worked for NASA, it would be like, uh, which it is right now, we get along about as well as Arabs and Israelis do. All right. We are hostile competitors. Uh, they're in the bureaucratic cesspool. I'm over here in the commercial sector. So you can tell I don't get a lot of Christmas cards from them boys. But um, the, we're into making money and profits out there. And in return, we make products. Now, you know about a space shuttle. They take off like a rocket, and they can perform like a spacecraft. Then they come back in and land on a runway like a plane, and they can do this over and over again. So you have a cycle. Has anybody ever bothered to tell you what's the benefits of all this? You know, what could you possibly get out of that? Well, other than some uh, pampers and maybe a little paramedic units, you may not really th think very much about what you could get from the space program. But it's, um, it's really a lot more effective in your life than you're even aware of. I'll show you that. We have something right here. This is a satellite that's being launched into space. Now, um, years ago, uh, a president named uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, which we called him in our world, Ronnie Reagan, anyway, he came in there and he asked if there could be a communication system built that could withstand a full thermonuclear strike by the Soviet Union. That's about 4,000 warheads exploding at one time in continental America. Uh, it would be a very <laughs> interesting day. So anyhow, um, to build a communication system on the ground, it would be really impossible because the ground will be just absolutely blasted away by EMPs, electronic magnetic pulse. Uh, it would fry all your communications. So the only place we could go is space. So we built this communication system with these satellites. Rockwell International put them out. And we've got six satellites in three different orbits. And we ended up with about 18 satellites. And we put uh, some additional satellites out there. And we've got them all in place. They formed this grid around the planet. Well, once we got that thing in place, um, and it was extremely expensive, what happened to the Berlin Wall? It collapsed. What happened to the Soviet Union? They collapsed. So the thing that we had built this half trillion dollar program for it doesn't exist now. So you can't justify it. So what do they do? What any good little red-blooded bureaucrat will do, they dump it. So they dumped the system into the corporate side. And when we looked at the whole systems and we saw it coming, one of the smaller things we get off this grid right now is called World Wide Web and Internet. Yeah. That's what it was built for. We didn't build it for you to play on internet with. I mean, come on, y'all. Think about a massive system. We couldn't afford it in the commercial sector. 